This module will cover the basics of using three different microscopes that are commonly used within the lab. Tissue culture microscopes are very useful tools commonly found in cell culture laboratories. They are very useful for assessing the density of your cell population or the individual health of cells. These microscopes from left to right include the fluorescent microscope, a tissue culture microscope and a dissection microscope. So shown here is a standard tissue culture microscope equipped with a camera. There are a series of important parts to identify. So working from top down, we first have the light source which passes down through a phased filter. This filter allows us to adjust the amount of light that is let through onto our sample, adjusting the brightness. Next, we have the camera, which is attached to an accompanying computer so we can view our cells. We also have the microscope stage, which is where you place the samples and you can clip them into place using these metal clips. You can adjust the stage in an X and Y axis back and forth using the adjustment knob on the side. Below the stage are the inverted objective lenses of different magnifications, which let you view your cells at different levels. Additionally, we also have the coarse and fine focus knob, which moves the stage up and down, moving your sample in and out of focus. We also have the brightness adjustment knob, which helps you increase the brightness. And finally, we have the objective eyepieces, which can be adjusted for each user. While these are the primary parts of a tissue culture microscope, the following image offers a more detailed list of individual components that are also important to know too. Here we have a flask of central nervous system support cells known as astrocytes. To mount onto the microscope, you gently place the flask on the stage between the clips. You can then look down the eyepieces to see your sample bringing them into focus before bringing them up on your computer screen. This is what the live cell feed from the tissue culture microscope camera looks like on a computer. Here we can clearly see an evenly distributed population of cells from our flask. First, we want to acquire the sharpest image possible of our cells. We do this by adjusting the coarse focus knob on the microscope itself. As we bring the cells out of focus, we can see the image becomes blurry and we can quickly bring it back into focus, acquiring a much sharper image of our cells. We can also adjust the brightness of our image on the interface or the microscope. This helps us visualize different regions. You can also move the stage as shown previously to look at different regions of interest around your cell culture. It is also useful to look at different magnifications Lower power objectives allow you to view wider fields of view. As we change magnification, the objective lenses are switching and so we see a black screen on our live feed. Higher power magnifications can be used to study cells in more detail individually. This image is now at 20x magnification and can be captured so it can be saved to a file and viewed later. Additionally, once you've acquired your image, you can also add a scale bar to help figure out what size and magnification you've acquired your image at. Next, we'll be discussing on how to use a fluorescent microscope. Fluorescent microscopy is a valuable technique used for visualizing and imaging cells and different proteins within them. Following immunostaining protocols, we can visualize individual proteins inside or on the surface of cells. We can also look at the broad morphology of these cells, and this can allow us to assess a range of different treatments or therapeutics or many other factors within the lab. So first, we'll look at a light box for the microscope. There are different controls we need to know. First, the power switch, which turns it on. This is the bulb meter, which indicates the lifespan in hours of the bulb. This knob allows us to adjust the amount of light passed through the filter, and this allows us to open and close the shutter. Two other modules that are important are both the power source for the microscope itself and the power source for the camera. The sample we will look at today is a slide mounted with cover slips that have had cells grown, fixed, and immunostained on them. 
Now looking at the individual components of the microscope, we'll work from top to bottom. First, we'll look at the individual objective eyepieces. These can be adjusted for each user to visualize their sample. Next, we have the objective lenses, which come in a range of different magnifications. These magnifications can range from anywhere between 4x and 100x magnification. Next, we have the coarse and fine focus knobs that allow us to move the stage up and down to bring our sample in and out of focus. Within the microscope here, we can also find filter blocks where we can use these filters to look at samples through different laser lines of different wavelengths. This is also the stage module that allows us to move our sample in an X and Y plane under the objective lens pieces. This allows us to look at different regions of interest of our sample under the microscope. Depending on the fluorescent tags used on your samples, you'll need to use different filter blocks to excite different wavelengths. These filter blocks can visualize different fluorescent tags on your samples by exciting the fluorophore or the fluorescent tag at different excitation wavelengths. For blue, we commonly see laser lines used around 359 nanometers. For green, we see 488 nanometers. And for red, we commonly see 555 nanometers for an excitation wavelength. While many microscopes are different, there are also many automatic features that can help bring your sample into autofocus. Additionally, you can do this manually through the coarse or fine focus knob. As we capture an image of different colors, the microscope will flick through different filters for each corresponding color. Once you've found a region of interest on your sample that you're happy to image, you can then focus on the computer interface. And this is an example of what it might look like. There are many buttons and different features to note, but today we'll just focus on some of the more basic features. This button here highlights that we can get the live image from our microscope onto the screen. Additionally, there are different channels we can look at, such as DAPI for blue, FITC for green, and TRITC for red. These are the DAPI, or nuclei, of a cell. To make your sample brighter, you can adjust the exposure time. The exposure time dictates how long you let photons of light through your microscope. As you can see, this increases the brightness of the sample. However, now we have an image that is overexposed and too bright. It is important to check your exposure levels, as if the image is too bright, the pixels that carry the data points will not be usable for any quantification. So it is sensible to adjust the exposure to a reasonable level where you can just see the cells. Once you are happy with the exposure settings, it's important to adjust the focus. Adjusting the focus time changes with the higher exposure that you apply to your image. Higher exposures, such as brighter images, will take longer to bring into sharp focus. If you are using multiple fluorescent tags, it is important to check the exposure on each channel. This is FITC staining for the actin cytoskeleton of meningeal cells. Here we again adjust the exposure in a similar way where we can just see sharp detail into our image. We now select on the image interface that each channel lines up with its corresponding color that we have selected. We can then run and capture this image. During this process, the microscope will filter through the different filter blocks and acquire an image through each one that is selected. The image is then overlaid and saved and we can clearly see the nuclei and cytoskeleton of the cells that we have captured. This is green FITC staining for the actin cytoskeleton of meningeal cells. Additionally, we can check the individual images and make sure we are happy with the stain and image quality before moving on to another part of the sample. Thank you for watching this video on fluorescent microscopy.